Hey, thanks for stopping by today. Today's topic is going to be variable text feature in Lightburn. This feature that a lot of people don't know about is a real game changer. If you have uh, a situation where you've got to engrave something that deals with a lot of names, numbers, those kind of things, and they change. So for example, I've got 15 of these sports bottles to do, and we're going to have the Gurkha and the uh, text for the softball uh, teams on the front, and then on the back of it, we're gonna provide a player's name for each individual bottle. Sometimes they want the player name and the number. Or you might have a graphic where you've got a baseball or a softball and you put the number in the middle of that. With the variable text feature in Lightburn, all of that can be done automatically where you don't actually have to go in and individually place each name. So today we're gonna start in Excel You'll need some kind of a spreadsheet. Typically, I have my clients provide me a, a spreadsheet or a list of names, so I ensure that all the spelling is correct. I put it in an Excel spreadsheet. I take that spreadsheet. I separate the long names from the short names. And the reason why you want to do that is because your spacing <coughs> will be different for longer names than it will be for uh, shorter names. Shorter names can be bigger. Longer names have to be a little bit smaller for them to fit. So we're going to separate those long and short names into two different uh, worksheets. We're going to save those uh, worksheets as a CSV file, a comma separated value format. That's what Lightburn needs uh, in order for this variable text feature to work. So once we save as uh, CSV files, then we're going to jump into Lightburn. I'm going to show you how to set up this template, show you how to go ahead and get the uh, variable text feature in Lightburn to work. There are two very specific things that you're gonna to have to do before this will work. And we'll cover that in depth when we get into Lightburn. But uh, give this a try. If you're doing name badges or anything like that where, you, where you, uh, your information is constantly changing, if it's names, um, numbers, titles, those kind of things, it works great on anything that you've got a list of uh, text that you need to automatically feed into a design Lightburn can do that for you. It's a great feature. It saves me a ton of time when I'm doing sports bottles. And uh, so that's what we're going to do today. So let's jump into uh, Excel to start. And then from that, we'll go into Lightburn and I'll show you how to set this up. When you want to use the variable text feature in Lightburn, the first place you're going to start is a spreadsheet. Now I'm using Excel here. And what I've done is my customer has provided me uh, 15 different names on what they want, <clears throat> excuse me, on their 32 ounce uh, sports bottle. So we're going to have the Gurkha and some text on one side. And then on the opposite side, we're going to have these individual names. And so I like to have them provide me this list if they can, primarily because that way um, you're assured the, the spelling. In other words, they've provided this to you to make sure that everything's spelled properly. And so um, the, the variable text feature in Lightburn will not work on a regular uh, Excel spreadsheet or any kind of spreadsheet. It needs what they call a, a CSV file. C is in Charlie, B is in Victor, S is in Sam file. And so what we're going to do before we get to converting this Excel spreadsheet to a CSV file, there's a couple of things that I wanted to talk to you about, about uh, format. And so one of the first things that we're going to do, you'll notice that we've got some long names and we've got some short names. And what I like to do, if I can, uh, it just makes it a lot simpler, is I'll take and I'll take these longer names and I'll separate them uh, on a different uh, worksheet and uh, export those on a different uh, CSV file. And so you'll have short names and you'll have long names. The reason why you want to do that is that way your format can be uh, relatively the same. Um, if you keep these all in one list, what happens is you're going to format your design for these longer names. And then when you get to these shorter names, um, it's just going to look small. And uh, on those 32 ounce sports bottles, it's not going to look very good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these uh, longer names. I'm going to copy them to an additional sheet down here. 
And uh, when we're all done, we're going to have the master file, which is this one here. We're going to have a list of short names, a list of long names, and then I'll show you how to export those as CSV files. And that's what we're going to use in Lightburn to make this uh, variable text feature work. Okay, to go ahead and select uh, these longer names, we're going to hold down the Command key on a Mac, and we're going to select our longer names. Okay, I'm going to right mouse click and we're going to copy those. We're going to come down here, add a new sheet. We're going to go ahead and paste them. All right, we've got those. We'll go ahead and rename this sheet. The, this will be long. All right, and then we'll come back to here. And we'll go ahead and select these short ones. Copy those. Add another sheet. Paste them in there. All right. We'll rename that. This is going to be short names. And we're good to go. I've uh, selected my short names tab. I've gone to File, Save As, and I'm going to save as a comma separated value, a CSV format. And so I'm going to do one for short names and then a separate file for long names. And this CSV file is what you're going to need for Lightburn uh, to get the variable text feature to work. So we've taken it from an Excel spreadsheet to, and we've saved as, we haven't exported, we've saved as a CSV file. And that's what we're going to use in Lightburn. So you'll have one for long names and one for short names. Okay, in order to use the variable text tool in Lightburn, we've got to make sure that the uh, that it's activated. And so if you don't see variable text in one of your two panels over here, it's because it's not turned on. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to Window and come down here and you can see that the variable text tool has not been selected. So put a check mark by that and you'll notice that it will show up in one of these two panes. It could come out as a free-floating dialog box and just go ahead and minimize it as small as you can make it and drag it over and if you hover over into one of these two panes uh, the background will turn kind of a grayish blue color and just let it go and then it will be one of these tabs. So once we have our variable text uh, tab available let's go ahead and get this layout done and I'll show you how this tool works. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and get the tumbler template laid out before we get into the text within the template. So typically the, what I do is I take the diameter of the tumbler, in this case it's 3.56 inches across, and I times it by pi or 3.14 which gives me a circumference of 11.178. Um, the engraving area of this sports bottle is 6.75 inches in depth. And so I've created just a rectangle that illustrates that. So if you look up here, my width is 11.178 inches in circumference, and my engraving height is 6.75. And that's what this black rectangle represents. Um, and so the other thing that we want to do is we want to create a couple of tool layers to align our, um, our graphics. And so if I take the circumference and divide it by two, I want to create two squares that are two layers by this dimension. And if I turn those on, you'll see I have a two layer here and a two layer here. Now this is assuming that you're going to have uh, designs on opposite sides of the uh, tumbler. So we're going to have the name on one side 
and the graphics, the Gurkha, and the, uh, the uh, label on the other. And so that's how I'm going to set up my template. The other thing that we're going to do when we're all done is we're going to rotate this 90 degrees uh, so it'll work with our rotary. I've got my artwork on the left hand side dropped in here. So all I did, what's nice about using these tool layers is if you have your snap to objects on and you've got your graphic ready, you can just drop it right in and it will snap to the center. So that's done. So the next thing we're going to do is create the merge field that we need. So we're going to have our name going vertically on the bottle. And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just come up here. We'll start a text function. And the secret to how the, uh, the, the variable text feature works is there's two commands that you have to, two keystrokes that you have to add to get this to work. And the first keystroke is going to be a percent symbol. So we're going to go percent. And then what we're also going to do is let me bring up uh, Excel. Um, the next item in this string that we're going to need is the column count. And so when you're looking at the uh, Excel CSV file or the Excel worksheet that you started with, uh, this is column A, this is column B and C and so on. Well, the way the variable text feature works in Lightburn is A starts out with column 0. This would be column 1, this would be column 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. So whatever you put after the percent sign is which column it's going to pick up on. And so if you had like a, 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 a player name and a number, you would have your name in column 0 and your number in column 1. And so you'd have your percent 0 for your name. And then on a different line, you would have percent, excuse me, percent and 1. And that way it'll pick up those uh, things individually. So we're just going to go ahead and keep it simple and go um, come over here and go to percent percent zero. So that's going to tell Lightburn which column you want to select. And just remember it always starts with zero and not one. So that's all we have to do. Um, we're going to come over here and get out of that We'll probably resize it just a little bit, just because I know it needs to be that big. OK. Now, this next step is probably the most critical piece. This percent and zero is pretty straightforward, easy to do. But one thing that if you don't do this next process, it will not work. So while you have your uh, programming highlighted, you need to come over here uh, right up here where it says normal, you're going to drop that down and you want to make this a merge CSV file. And what it does is it lets Lightburn know that there's going to be supporting documentation that ties together with this uh, text string. And so all we've got to do now that we've got the percent and the, uh, the column labeled We've got this change to a merge CSV file. The only other thing we've got to do is come over here and we've got to tell Lightburn where does that uh, CSV file live. And so if we go to browse and we go to desktop and we'll, we'll select the player list short and we'll say open. And at this point, nothing happens. But you notice now that this CSV file is tied to this bunch of programming right here. Next, I'll show you how to test it. OK, we rotated our design 90 degrees. I've got user origin, middle, right. This particular template is set up for a pie burn. Um, so your uh, Tumblr opening is to the right instead of the left. And so let's test this out. We've got this in position. And so your, your uh, variable text tab has a current record. Where do you want me to start? And how many records are in this CSV file? There's seven names in this. And we're going to advance by one. 
And so typically you're always starting on record zero. And if I push the test button, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go ahead and show up. Now, as soon as I let it go, it's going to go away. So the only other way you can do this, if you want to just verify it, is do a print preview, or excuse me, uh, you know, a preview, and it'll, sh it'll show you that. That way you can kind of see what's going on there. And so usually what I'll do is I'll kind of step through to see which is my longest name, and Fillmore is going to be one of them for sure. Bergman is probably the longest, and you see it fits fine in my engraving area. So I know all the rest are going to are going to work fine. So it's just a matter of bouncing um, and seeing that they all fit. They all look good. They're all going to be automatically centered, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so typically, what I normally do is I uh, I'm connected to my laser here, and I will go ahead and hit start on current record zero and hit send. And what I'll do is I'll just put in these names and hit enter. Then I'll go to the next one and hit send and Wallace. Okay, and so you get the idea. And so I'll go through all of my tumblers and just send them that way. Um, I'm not going back and forth. Uh, you'll notice on my file list, I've got, I, I've got all my names here. I could have as many as I need to. That way you can dump your designs to your controller on your laser uh, and not have to go back and forth, back and forth uh, from your controller to your uh, laptop, back and forth. Works out great. The other thing that I will tell you is I, um, I can't get this auto advance to work at least in the latest one. If I turn it on and I hit send, it won't advance. And so there's probably something that I'm not doing correctly there for that to work. But it does have an auto advance feature. And from what I've been told is when you hit send, it will step it to the next record. But I cannot get it to do that. So if you have, uh, if you're able to do that, I would love to hear how that's done. Well, as you can see, using the variable text feature in Lightburn can be a real game changer, save you a whole lot of time, whether you're doing name badges, sports bottles, really anything with a list. I hope this information was helpful. If you guys would do me a, a big favor, give me a like, a thumbs up, that really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, I'd really appreciate it. We're getting uh, about 13,500 subscribers right now, so excited about that. And if you have the ability, hit that thanks button, contribute to the channel. It's those contributions that are making content like this possible. Appreciate everybody checking this out. Everybody have a great day.